So before we get into it, here at Bionic Buzz, we are all about people's passion. Where did your passion from filmmaking kind of come from? Was your role inspired it? performance or something that was just naturally for you as a child? I mean, I was 50. I mean, I always was crazy about music and films. And, you know, all I did was well, I, you know, watching movies drove my parents absolutely crazy. And then um, at the age of 15, I was going to be a pro tennis player, but I had a really terrible injury on my shoulder. So I had uh -huh. to give that up. I'm like, all right, well, now I'll become an artist and a filmmaker instead. And I never look back. <laughs> That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Emily. Yeah. Well, uh, and I started as a creative in, um, in advertising uh, years ago. So I was more of an industry agency person and I uh, was an, a graphic designer and uh, later on more into photography. And then later, even later on, I started producing when I found out that there were a lot better creatives than me, but I'm very good at helping other creatives become their better selves. So that's where, I have, when I became a, a filmmaker more in the collaborative art space i guess i love it so how are you able to produce a latino story that i feel like is relatable to every household in america right now because i mean the performances were so good the camera work it, everything was so amazing where did this uh, well, first start you know yeah it's it's teamwork right filmmaking mm -hmm. is teamwork you 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 um you can't do it on your own so Basically, you know, I made a Latino film a while back, Green Card Warrior. So, you know, what I do in my work, I definitely create platforms for voices, unseen people in society, social justice uh, topics. Um, um, so, you know, this started sort of in 2019 when, you know, Trump kept on bashing Latinos and all the stuff with eyes and the, and the border wall and, and children in cages. So yes. I have a lot of Latino friends. So they were like, we had a lot of conversations and, you know, people talking about like how their family was becoming divided because of this, you know. And, uh, and another thing is like, you know, Latinos are being, you know, addressed as one demographic because, but there are big differences, whether you are from Puerto Rico or from El Salvador or from Mexico. And um, so that, that really like frustrated me as well. And, you know, I was talking to, to a friend back at the time, Leticia, and she's told me about things about her family and how it's affecting, you know, everything. So I took a lot of these ingredients and also a really good friend of mine. We've been super homies for a long time. He's Mexican American and he is like a big Trump supporter. And I'm like, I was mind boggled about that, you know? And end of the story is like our friendship has evaporated. So I was like, this is something that we, it's happening and we need to document this, you know? We have mm -hmm. to document a moment in time and, and put out the message, like, don't judge people, don't stereotype, be open-minded. We all want to say, want the same thing. And, you know, I came to Ellen with the project and, and, you know, she has her own reasons, which she will explain, but she's done a really awesome campaign, like a year before that, that was super dope. And I was like, she has a similar mindset as me, so. My dog's barking. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think that when, when Miriam came to me with this particular script, um, I felt that it wasn't only the Latino community that we were actually uh, representing here. It felt like there was just, um, it could, like you said, it was, uh, it could have been any table in, in, in the world at this point in time. And at the time, we were uh, we were a lot in in the whole Brexit thing. Obviously, we're both European, but it was a, a big conversation even in, in in Europe, whereby there was so many people that were divided, you know, by politics at the table. So I felt for me it wasn't only America or only Latino community, but it was a worldwide um, topic that everybody could identify with. Uh, but obviously Absolutely. the fact that at the time I felt it was very, very important that the Latino community, who is, there are a lot of them are actually Trump supporters, that we actually, with this film, try and um, stimulate them to um, go out and vote and, um, and obviously, you know, towards one more of a for me, a democratic uh, yes. side, but, uh, <laughs> but oh, that's no. not. <laughs> Please go out and vote, everybody. Yeah. 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 No, and Please it's also like, vote. it's very true what Ellen says. This is conversations that are happening 
all around America, right? Regardless of your background, your, your belief, your ethnicity, and they're happening globally. I mean, you know, the world is in a very dire situation and, um, um, you know, this is not just an isolated story. It's a very, you know, global uh, topic. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I was really blown away by the performances. Talk about getting this amazing cast for this, you know? Well, that's all yeah. credit to Miriam. I no, and, and like I say, thanks, Ellen, but that's not true. I mean, again, it's it's, effort. It's, it's, <laughs> it's it's collaboration, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's all through relationships, you know, and, and the great thing was like, you reach out to the Latino cast and, and they respond to this. They wanted to be part of this because it was very personal to them, right? They felt like, oh my God, this is my personal story. This is happening at my house or in my family. So in a way, like we got such good feedback when we, we, we sent out the script that we're like, oh, I would love to work with Antonio, right? And he was like, you know, Jess was very instrumental in that. And, you know, it definitely collaborative, you know, having relationships and, and everyone we wanted basically said yes. So, because it was so personal to them, you know? They all felt they were telling their own story. Absolutely. And the amazing thing I really liked about it was it's one location, but um, I believe your cinematographer was David. I forget his last name, but it was a lot of interesting camera angles and pans. It really kept like the pace going really fast, you know, even, you know, even though it was just, every, just a family talking at a dinner table, you know. Well, you know, I mean, again, Ellen is a great producer. So she was able to bring in David Frederick, you know, who's a very experienced DP. And, you know, it's challenging when you have something that only that is in its dialogue, very dynamic and in its emotion, but visually could be extremely static. So, you know, we sat down and we really sort of developed uh, a vision and an approach to it like, okay, so people are sitting down, they're stagnant. So that means that the camera needs to move. And it's not just about like keeping the camera on someone telling the dialogue, it's about the other person, how they react to that, right? So again, Ellen brought in a great editor, Todd Sandler, you know, who was, you know, it's just made it very fluid. So again, it's, it's collaborative, it's teamwork. Mm. Very cool. So this uh, short film, Estelo Americano, is going to be coming October 19th on Los Cartos. I'm dyslexic, so I hope I said that correctly. Yeah, Los Cartos. Oh, yes. Hey, yes. What's going on for me? So, um, and tell us about, this is a, a, a website that uh, promotes uh, Latino stories, right? Hispanic filmmakers and content creators, right? Yeah, correct. It's a platform that, um, you know, focuses on like you said, filmmakers, Latino content. Obviously, Ellen and I are both uh, Dutch, but living in America, in LA. Uh, but yeah, focus on Latino stories and, and highlighting the art, you know? Very cool. Um, is there anything any, anything in the works for both of you you're allowed to talk about from up before we let you go? Ellen? Oh, okay. Well, no, yeah, we're working on some, uh, I'm both in the advertising space and into in uh, a narrative space. So we're both actually working together on a new project, uh, which is um, uh, about a, um, a scientist actually who's trying, who's found a way to eradicate malaria. Um, and we're going to, we're working on that together. Um, doing um happy to go start shooting again proper shoots uh next uh, next uh, month which is also very exciting uh with john cena so i'm quite very excited to do that it'd be nice to get back into it uh after a uh, a little well quite a long break of not really shooting outside yeah. but uh yeah that's uh, that's a little bit on my side what's going on and um, miriam has quite a lot of different projects happening as well right yeah, we're both very busy and, uh, you know, keeping it rolling. Obviously, it's been very challenging doing COVID also to do post-production on a film when you can't sit together in the same room. You can't look at the same monitor. You don't listen to the same speakers. So, you know, and uh, man, we hope to get out of this and start, you know, shooting again and, and continuing doing what we're doing. Yeah, I've got a few projects in the pipeline, but um, yeah. Well, keep up the amazing work and everyone, please uh, go out and vote this year and check out Estelo Americano Monday, October 19th at www.loscartos.com. All right. Isabel says goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks, Stephen. Bye. Thank you.